Hi guys, today I thought I would talk about my NICU experience and if you don't know what NICU is, NICU stands for Neonatal Intensive Care Unit and that's the place where babies go when they are born and they need a little bit more help either with their breathing, with uh, their body temperature or with anything else and I went through NICU with my first son it was a very, very difficult experience. I've spoken about my birth story, which I'll leave linked below, uh, but I haven't actually talked about this in depth and talking about the emotions and the feelings, which are often the hardest thing to deal with when you have a child who is in NICU. So I hope this video will be helpful to some of you who has a child currently in NICU, or if you are pregnant and some concerns have been um, flagged up that your baby might need to go into NICU. It's a very tough thing to deal with and I hope that you can take something out of this video to help you with your journey. And if you've never been through NICU, maybe you're just interested in knowing how it is and how does it feel for a parent to have a baby um, in NICU. So, Let's start from the beginning. So my first child, James, he was born in 2015 and my whole pregnancy was a very healthy pregnancy, but at 37 weeks, actually at 36 weeks and six days, I got um, picked up with preeclampsia and I was taken for an induction, quite an emergency induction. So I was induced the very next day when I, when I turned 37 weeks and my baby was full term but his growth had stopped from about 33 weeks. When I was told that my baby was really small, um, the doctors told me that the baby might need a little bit of help after he was born and that he might have to be taken into intensive care and that really scared me because he was my first son, I didn't know anything, my first child, I didn't know anything what that involved and what was going to happen to him if he was going to take off, be taken off me straight away and all they, that they told me is that they would have to see as soon as he was born how much care, if any, he would need. I gave birth to him, it was a natural delivery and as soon as he was born um, he was very little, it was the first thing I noticed and he got weighed and he weighed four pounds and nine ounces. He was breathing fine, everything was perfect, um, so there were no concerns straight away. I know that some babies can be a little bit more poorly and they, um, they get taken pretty quickly into intensive care because they need help with a few other things, but luckily for us, uh, James didn't need any help, any help breathing. He was coping well, so I, uh, we did skin to skin straight away, I breastfed him and we stayed together for a good four hours. So we went to the postnatal area, I went to have a shower and I left my husband with uh, our brand new son James and he was there looking after him, holding him and um, he said that a doctor had come through to measure his temperature and his blood sugar levels and they said that his temperature was quite low and his blood sugar levels were quite low so that they wanted to take him into NICU to monitor him a little bit more, make sure that he was okay. So at that point, um, James was still there with us and um, I was feeding him and I was getting help with feeding from midwives and nurses and then an hour or so later they came over and they said we're going to take him downstairs to NICU and we're going to get him all settled in and prepped and then you can come and see him. So I think to us that was all fine because that's what we were told to do but it just felt a bit surreal because we I'd just given birth and now my baby was getting taken away from me and it just felt really surreal but it didn't feel real like it didn't feel like that's what was going to be our lives for the next few days or so until it actually hit me that he wasn't going to come back and sleep with me he was going and he was staying there and had I known that I would have insisted to go with him and that's one of the things that I feel like made me feel completely like I wasn't in control was that I didn't know that I could go with him I got told that they were going to prep him and then I could come and see him and I thought okay by tonight he'll be back with me and we're going to be sleeping in here and tomorrow we're going home or whatever so yeah first day he was in NICU um 
he was only there for those two reasons, to regulate his body temperature and to regulate his body, bl blood sugar levels. And uh, he wasn't in an incubator, he was just in a cot, which was a, a warm, like, temperature cot. Um, and I could see him, I could touch him. The first problem that arised was that I wanted to breastfeed, but because he wasn't holding up his blood sugar levels, he was wasting a lot of energy trying to breastfeed, trying to get the milk from me, and I didn't even know how much milk I had at that point because it was all colostrum, and he was using up all of his energy, and then his blood sugar levels were coming up low. And then when it came to actually doing the measure of the blood sugar, it was coming up low. So what the midwives and the nurses and doctors were telling us was that if you want to take your baby home as soon as possible, then maybe uh, let us feed him through a tube or a bottle um, to get his blood sugar levels regulated, then you can get your breastfeeding established when you're home. And obviously I took that as the thing to do, being a first time mum, and I went along with it, I said okay let's get him better, let's get him well and take him home because I don't want uh, my baby to stay in NICU, I just want to take my baby home and we'll get breastfeeding established when we're there. And that was my first mistake because I, I was never able then to exclusively breastfeed my supply went really down obviously i had a baby that needed feeding but i wasn't feeding so my breasts were being told there's no baby to feed so don't produce milk and it was only on my third day in NICU that i got told by a lovely midwife why don't you express and try and get your milk flow going and i started doing that but i was already three days late and things ne never got back to normal so by the end of the second day in NICU, um, James was already regulating his own body temperature, but they wanted to get him in um, regular feeds. I don't know if every baby is like that or if every NICU is like that, but for us, it started with two hourly feeds, and then if he was reg if he was holding up his blood sugar levels every two hours, then it was three hourly feeds, then four hourly feeds, and we could only be discharged if he was holding up his blood sugar levels for four hourly feeds. So a gap of four hours in between feeds and he would have to hold up um, a certain level. I can't remember what the number was of a blood sugar. And he, at that point, he was being fed through a tube. So when they put that tube in, my heart sank because it just looked scary and it just looked not like what I expected I was going to be going through and the emotions that I felt was that I didn't want anyone to see my baby like that because I didn't want him to think that he was any sort of weaker or more fragile than other babies so we didn't want people taking photos of him with the tube on and um, now I still feel emotional about it because I, I remember how I felt and now it feels a bit silly because I know it's all part of his story, it's part of his life and it's who he is. He's a tough, strong boy. But at that point, we didn't, we didn't want it and we were just really precious about him and about what was being done to him and how he was being seen. So that hit like a rock for us, seeing him with that tube. And it was the best thing for him because he was getting the feeds without getting tired. Um, so we knew that, it, it's just how it felt. And the other thing that felt horrible were the little heel pricks for the blood sugar levels. As you can imagine, at first he was on two hourly feeds, so every two hours he was having his heel pricked to get some blood sample to test the blood sugar level. And every two hours, then every three hours, then every four hours for five days, I think he was in NICU for five days in total, is a lot. His poor heels were like full of marks and just to see your precious little baby with lots of little red marks on their heel from where all the places that they've been drawing blood out of, it's it's horrendous and most of the, the nurses and midwives were really good, they were very professional, they do it quickly. James never cried, he was just like, he'd flinch a little bit and then they'd take out the blood and they were just amazed at how strong he was. But there was one particular situation where someone 
took a long time to get the blood out of him and it just wasn't coming out and Jane started to cry and scream and we just had to tell them to stop. That's when kind of like I remember my first lioness maternal instinct kicked in and I just had to say no you're not doing it I don't care you're not doing it so it was a really emotional thing for us and I wanted to be there for every single time they did that just just to make sure that he was okay it's just a mother thing I think or a parent thing um but yeah so on day Two, I got told that I had to go home and leave James and that because I, I was being discharged I didn't need any more care but James had to stay and at the moment I got told that I couldn't understand I just refused I said no I'm not leaving my baby here and I'm not going home without my baby this is just not normal it's not natural and the people that were looking after us were very lovely and kind and trying to get me to understand the practical side of things but I was only thinking with my heart and my emotion my emotions and they were telling me that I could not I couldn't so I protested I cried and I'm never like that I'm usually sort of like I accept things that are reasonable but I didn't and I just said this just doesn't feel right eventually came to my senses and realized that I had to go home, that I couldn't stay in hospital, admitted as a patient for five days, taking up spaces for other people who needed care more than me. And so got discharged the second day, stayed, spent the whole day with James in NICU and then went home. Actually, the whole way to the car, I was in tears, sat in the car, first time that I was leaving the hospital since arriving at the hospital pregnant, leaving the hospital not pregnant, not with my baby, just didn't feel right. And to this day, I can't think about that without wanting to cry because it was horrible. That's all I can describe as. And I remember talking to my husband and talking to him and saying, I just don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to leave the hospital. I don't want to go home. This feels wrong without my baby and I just remember crying the whole time in the car getting home and getting under the covers and crying seeing the Moses basket next to the to my bed empty and just saying to him I'm going to be here for an hour but then we're going straight back to hospital and I'm going to stay there and um, yeah so that day came and went and I went back to the hospital I stayed there the nurses told me that I was welcome in NICU at any time that I wanted for as long as I wanted that's the only thing that gave me the peace that I needed to go home and leave James there he was under amazing care and I was being told that I could be there at any moment I wanted so I stayed there for as much as I could but then Obviously, I had to go home. He was there for five days. I had to go home to shower, to eat. I didn't want to do any of these things. I felt tremendous guilt, a lot of guilt doing anything for myself. So if I was home and I was eating, I felt guilty that I wasn't with James. If I was showering or sleeping, I felt guilty that I wasn't with him. And in hindsight, I should have actually m made the most of a bad situation and thinking, there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing that I can make it better. I can't have my baby any sooner with me. Why don't I get some sleep and rest whilst I can? Because when he's home, I'm not going to be getting any of that. And that's the one thing that I would say to any mum who is going to go through NICU. Don't beat yourself up. You're doing everything you can. Make the most out of a bad situation and get some rest, get some food, make yourself stronger because it's a tough deal. And I didn't do any of those things. So I was going to hospital every single day, more tired because I wasn't sleeping and I wasn't doing anything for myself. I just felt like I needed to be mum and I needed to be there next to him and not at home. So yeah, so then he was getting progressively better. He never got worse at any point, but he just was struggling to meet those targets. They wanted to see at four hourly feeds, three consistent readings and we got one reading then we got a second good reading for hourly feeds and then the third one he dropped again so we were back to square one he had to do another three lots so three lots of four hours is 12 hours so every time he failed one of them it was going to be another 12 hours that he'd have to stay 
and um, yeah all the beeps and all the noises um, after day two or day three I started to get used to the beeping and the noises and it's it's tough you're there with a lot of mums going through the same thing you empathize with them all and you get to know them and their babies and it's really difficult there were a lot of babies in um, very serious conditions much more than James was so I did my best to help any mums that were coming after me kind of like with my experience of being there for a day or so um, but yeah that is that was the hardest part of NICU so then at day five he the day four he met his targets he was ready to go home and I got offered um, the option to either take him home or to spend the night in there which they call rooming in and they have a room where parents can stay with their babies just to build up a bit of confidence if you're not confident in what you're doing yet um, and then you go home the next day which is what I chose to do I wanted to make sure that I could look after him because um, I know this is not true but I felt a bit less of a mum because I'd been um, a mum for five days without a baby at home so I felt like I didn't know how to look after my baby because I missed out on those first five days and I had people there constantly to help me. I had people there to help me bath him, help him, me feed him, help me change his nappy with everything. And I felt like suddenly I was going to go home and I, I wouldn't have all this help. I wouldn't know what to do. And so I chose to room in and I think it was the best thing. It gave me a lot of confidence to, to handle him on my own through the night, knowing that I could at any point press a buzz and someone would come to help me, but that I could do it by myself. We also had a first aid course um, offered to us uh, because we were there at the hospital and before we, we took James home which was amazing. So day five we took him home and we've had him since and he's been perfect and healthy and we looked after him, we never failed him. All those worries, all those doubts they eventually slowly disappeared and they became less and less and less but I must say that NICU made me a lot more of an anxious mum <laughs> than I thought I would be and it was only because it's a scary thing you don't know you don't think that your baby is in NICU because of things that are silly in your mind whatever your baby is in NICU for it's it's tough it's scary it's life-threatening even and so I felt at home like his life dependent, depended on me being there for him 100% of the time and I needed to be for him before I was for anyone, for me, for anyone. And um, that kind of dictated how things went for us. And slowly I became more confident as a mum. I think that came with time. But yeah, we had a very positive NICU experience um, with conflicted emotions and... Um, difficulties but everything worked out well in the end and I know and I'm sure that anyone who goes through NICU feel, feels similar conflicted sort of emotions and all these feelings maybe slightly different and maybe with a slightly different situation but I'm sure that they are similar so if you've been through this please comment below share your experiences I find them very interesting to read but more so I think people who are watching this video will find them helpful because it's not just me talking about my experience if you leave your comment below everybody can read it and share lots of experiences together and help each other because that's what we're here for in this amazing parenting community and if you're interested in hearing more about NICU experiences or just birth stories make sure you go to channelmum.com and watch lots and lots and lots of us lots of mums talking about their experiences as mums so without further ado I'm gonna take my snivels uh, with me and uh, yeah so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you found it helpful useful interesting anything if you did give it a thumbs up share it with your friends if you think that they might benefit from it and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you in my next video bye <laughs>